I'm super excited to bring you this video today that's going to have some of Brisbane's best suburbs that you can buy right now under the 650k mark. Now this next suburb, Marsden, is in the southern side of Brisbane CBD and is around about 25 k's from the city. Now this part of Brisbane is very, very similar to the northwest of Sydney or the Southern Shire in Sydney or sort of the northeastern parts of Melbourne. Now what I love about Marsden is it had a really, really bad historical brand name and that's put a whole lot of investors and owner occupiers off the area for the last 15 years. Like all of these areas close to the city of Perth, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, etc., these areas that are often overlooked end up becoming incredible investments because sooner or later, like is happening right now, people realize they're super, super close to the CBD. They're very close to access to main roads and transport like trains, and they actually have quite good school districts and the types of people that used to live there when the house prices were 300K and the rents were 250 a week can no longer afford to be there when the house prices are 550 to 600K and the rents are above 500 a week. So what we're seeing in this part of the city, which is South Brisbane, is a major washing of the tide at the moment, like we've seen in Sydney and Melbourne in the past. Now it's not gonna be a perfect area until the average house price gets to between seven and 800K and the average household income jumps to sort of that 75K to 100K per year, but it's well on its way to that at the moment. So the vacancy rates are very, very low. Incomes have jumped massively in the last two census. The percentage of renters is still extremely high. There was a high number of investors that bought this area in the last 15 years because it was so cheap. What I think is happening at the moment is a lot of people are selling out those investments because they're finally getting their money back, people that have been sitting in Brisbane for a long time. And we're mainly buying against owner occupiers and first home buyers that wanna live there and raise their kids there because of the proximity to schools, transport, the CBD, and the Gold Coast is only 35 to 40 minutes down the road. Now, the 10 year growth rates have been very, very low compared to neighboring suburbs. In fact, if you looked at a map of Brisbane, um, there's a main road that runs from the Gold Coast to the city called the M1. On one side of the highway, there's suburbs like Daisy Hill, Shaler Park, etc., that have literally doubled in value in the last five years. You look across the highway in the likes of the Marsdens and the Slacks Creek, and they haven't gone through anywhere near the same amount of growth in the same period of time, which I really, really like, especially because people can easily drive straight across the highway to seven of the top 11 schools in South Brisbane on the other side of the road there. Now the DSR is perfectly ripe for buying at the moment. Um, average house prices are realistically between 550 and 650K right now, depending on what you're after. Um, the council is quite supportive for development. So if you talk to a town planner and the local council, um, you may be able to look at just a standard single income home but with the right land size frontage and dimensions on the block, you might be able to do something a bit more fun, like a house with a granny flat, a duplex, or even maybe a subdivision subject to talking with your planners and the council and obviously finding the right builder. But areas like this, the thing I love about Brisbane right now is because we haven't gone through the crazy price growth that the likes of parts of Perth, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, etc. have gone through in the last 10 to 15 years. Places with poor brand names like Marsden that have been forgotten about are still sort of got that little bit of a stigma to them. And because of that, like we've seen in so many parts of Sydney and Melbourne, we should see some pretty significant price growth in this area over the next 15 years. In fact, according to a recent article in the Australian Financial Review, where seven analysts, including some of them from the major banks, looked at the average parts of Brisbane in the south here where homes were selling for 600K. They're expecting by the Olympic Games, the house prices to go to somewhere between 900K and 1.1 to $1.2 million between now and the Olympic Games. Now, I personally can't see that happening. Who knows what the future holds, but that sort of information getting through the media getting through the newspapers, getting online and getting through the investment community is going to have a positive upside for suburbs like this as it washes through over time. Now, traditionally in every single capital city in Australia, 
what happens is prices generally go up first on the high quality blue chip beachside suburbs. Then they go up in the inner city waterfront suburbs, then the inner city and middle ring. So suburbs within sort of five to 10 Ks. And then that growth starts rippling out. Now, what I love about growing up in Sydney and then moving into Queensland is I've seen this happen time and time again in Sydney where suburbs sort of 20 k's from the CBD like Goodner get completely overlooked or that's Goodner, that's not a great place to live, that's one of those sorts of suburbs and then all of a sudden the population continues to grow in the city which according to the Australian Bureau of Stats, South East Queensland is going to be at 6 million people within about 25 years from today start going, shit, this is actually really cheap and really close to the city. And as a first time buyer or as a family, I can actually get into an area with great schools, great infrastructure, well below the 600K mark. So what I love about Goodna, the same as every other suburb in Brisbane at the moment, is the vacancy rates are ridiculously low. That's one third of 1% right now. Incomes are okay. Percentages of renters, like I said, is a little bit higher than where I'd like it to be. I'd like it to be sub 35, but there has been a whole bunch of new land released in Goodna with new houses built in the last 15 years. And like any estate in Australia, the developers will tell you it's an owner-occupied estate, which is absolute BS. Basically, the developers just want to sell as much of their stuff as quickly as they can through property markets to investors all over Australia and the world. So when they build the land and build the first houses, it's always sold to investors, which in goodness case is making the percentage of renters looking much higher than it will be in another 10 to 15 years. And in 10 to 15 years, those investors will move those properties on and first time, second time, families will move into the area and this number will come back below the 35% mark, which I've seen happen all over Australia. Um, very, very close to the city, 20 Ks. Because of that, it is phenomenally undervalued. You know, I know suburbs within the same range, 20 k in the city on the north side or the southern side, where houses could be between 200 and 500 k more expensive right now. Um, there's quite a bit of heat out there at the moment that's not being reflected in the DSR scores. In fact, it's gone from nobody looking at this area or part of the city in 2022 to between 10 to 60 groups rocking up to open homes at the moment in the market. Um, so I'd say that DSR score will steadily increase. Um, right now, we're coming off the back of many months in a row of pretty positive sentiment. Um, I think we're heading according to KPMG, the ABC and SBS at the moment for somewhere between about a 10 um, to maybe even 50% growth rate um, across Australia's capital cities in the next 12 months or so based on their reports at the moment that are coming out. Now, as always, these average house prices don't tell the full story. In reality, you're looking at 500K to 600K to get into the area. Uh, but what's also cool is when you take out units, townhouses and land, um, the average weekly rents are much better for the household. So between 450 and 500 bucks a week for the average property in the area. But Love this suburb. Again, think it's most people in Brisbane living with a blinder on. I think there's great potential there over the medium to longer term for capital growth, great cash flow, and very, very high quality, low maintenance, tenant ready properties available in this area right now. Now, for those of you who are seriously looking to buy an investment property in the next 12 months, I'd love to offer you a one on one strategy session. Just jump over to www.pumpedonproperty.com, click that free strategy session button. Then we can talk about where you are right now. We can talk about where you'd like to be longer term. We can share these suburbs as well as many more that look phenomenal in Brisbane in the next 12 months. And then you can take that information and go and absolutely smash it on your own or potentially become one of the extremely small number of clients that we work with each month here at Pumped On Property. But either way, I wish you all the best on your journey to financial freedom and financial peace in your future. Woo, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Cool, yeah. Oh, sweaty. So sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.